So let's take a look at this problem. At what point in the first quadrant on the parabola y equals 4 minus x squared does the tangent line together with the coordinate axes determine a triangle of minimum area? Um, in this problem especially, but in pretty much all optimization problems, you want to start by drawing a diagram. So this is our picture. The parabola, the green parabola right here, that's 4 minus x squared in the first quadrant. Y-intercept is at 0, 4. The x-intercept is at 2, 0. And I just picked a point here with x-coordinate p, and so though its y-coordinate is 4 minus p squared. I can draw the tangent line, and that gives me this triangle. And we can find the area of the triangle by multiplying a times b and dividing by 2. And notice that a and b are the x and y intercepts of this tangent line. So our objective function is the area. And the variable that we probably want to use is p, because that tells us where the point of tangency is. And that's a, b over 2. a and b we need to write in terms of p. So we need to find some relationships between a, b, and p. If you notice, um, there's a tangent line here. If, in, if we want to do something with that tangent line, we should find the equation of that. So let's do that. We know that y is equal to 4 minus x squared. So y prime is minus 2x. That's the slope of the tangent line at the, the x-coordinate x. So the slope is going to be minus 2p if we want a tangent line at the point p for minus p square. And using the using the point slope form, we can just write down the equation of the tangent line. Y coordinate of the point of tangency is 4 minus p square. That's equal to minus 2p times x minus p. We can simplify that a little bit to, let's see, y minus 4 plus p squared equals minus 2p, or minus 2px plus 4p squared. Sorry, I mean 2p squared. Okay, now we want to find the x-intercept, that's a. At the x-intercept, y is equal to 0 and x is equal to a. And then we can write the rest of the stuff in. And let's solve for a. The 0 on the left goes away. That's good. Um, subtract 2p squared from both sides. I have, oops, I meant plus p squared here. So if I subtract p squared from both sides, or 2p squared from both sides, I have minus 4 minus p squared equals, I want a, so I divide by 2p or minus 2p, so a is uh, 4 plus p squared over 2p. And now if we want a y-intercept, y-intercept is b for the y-coordinate, b for the y-coordinate, and 0 for the x-coordinate. And so this goes away. Um, b is equal to p squared plus 4. So b is a little simpler than a. And so now we can write our objective function down. a of p is a b over 2, which means it's 4 plus p squared over 2p times p squared plus 4. That's b all over 2. And so this is, let's see. On the top, it would be p to the fourth plus six, sorry, 8p plus 16 over 4p. p is bounded between 0 and 2, right? Because this parabola only exists with those x coordinates. And so we can write that p is in between 0 and 2. So let's take a derivative. Um, before we take the derivative, it may be easier to write this as p cubed over 4 plus, oops, that's 8p squared, so that's 2p plus 4 over 
p. So we don't have to use the quotient rule. This is 3p squared over 4 plus 2 plus um, 4 over p is 4 times p to the minus 1. So the derivative is minus 4p to the negative 2 or minus 4p over p squared. If we set a of p equal to 0 to find the critical points, we get 3p squared over 4 plus 2 minus 4 over p squared equals 0. We can clear out the denominators by multiplying everything by 4p squared to get 3p to the 4th plus 8p squared minus 16 equals 0. So this uh, this polynomial looks a little hard. It's to the fourth degree, but notice that you only have the fourth degree and the second degree term here. So you could think of p squared as your variable, and do this as a quadratic. In fact, this is actually factorable. If you do, if you use p squared as say, think of p squared as x, you would have three x squared plus eight x minus sixteen. It is factorable to let's see, three p um p squared plus four. And 3p squared minus, oops, 4. If you multiply this out, you would in fact get 3p to the 4th plus 8p squared minus 16. If you don't know how to factor this, you can think of p squares. Replace p squared with x and use the quadratic formula to find p squared. In any case, what we have here is that p squared is equal to a negative 4. And p squared is equal to 4 thirds. p squared equals negative 4 doesn't work. You can't have imaginary solutions for p. p can't be 2i or plus or minus 2i because we're doing a geometry problem. And when p squared equals 4 over 3, p is plus or minus 2 over root 3. It can't be minus 2 over root 3 because p is in the first quadrant, it's between 0 and 2, so we can actually say that p equals 2 over root 3 is the only applicable critical point. It's the only relevant critical point. So now that we have the critical point, we can use the, uh, we can use, we can finish the um, closed interval test by making a little chart, plug in the endpoints and two, and finding a of p. Well, if you, the one thing you notice is that if you go back to a of p, which is this p to the fourth plus a p squared plus sixteen over four p, if you plug in zero, actually get an in, you get sixteen over essentially zero so the limit you can't really plug in zero but the limit as x as p approaches zero would be infinite so that basically means that when the tangent line is tangent at zero you have an infinite area and that does make sense because if you look at the diagram if you if the point of tangency was here the tangent line would be horizontal and so the area encompassed by the horizontal tangent line and the two axes would essentially be an infinite rectangle, which is totally not the minimum area. So we'll not use that. If you plug in 2 over root 3, you should get 8 over 3. And if you plug in 2, you should get 8. Um, so... This is clearly the absolute minimum. And so the triangle of minimum area occurs when the tangent line is tangent to P when P is equal to two over two over root three. 